Psalm 41 I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Six months after World Venture appointed us as missionaries to Mali, Peter Lindsay helped us make a video. We titled that video, The Road to Mali. Three years later, we finally reached the end of that long road. Right after our appointment in June 2007, we began devoting our full effort to raising the support we would need, and we took all the necessary steps to leave for the field before the year was done. We knew it was an ambitious goal, but we were trusting in a capable God. This is an excerpt from our newsletter, When That Year Had Passed. We wish this letter were coming to you from the field, but the Lord saw fit to keep us here longer than we expected. Of course, this brings all kinds of questions into our minds, like, were we really listening to God's will when we set our sights on leaving in August? Have we not been working hard enough? How long will it be? And what's going to happen in the coming months that God wants us to be a part of? Psalm 39, 7 And now, O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. In God's infinite wisdom, He didn't let us go that next year. He kept us in San Jose, where we served, worked, prepared, deepened relationships, discipled, and waited for the next year and a half. As our support level grew to 80%, we set another ambitious goal, to leave on Christmas Day 2010. Quite honestly, it was scary to make ourselves vulnerable again because God said no the first time we set a departure date. But this time, He said yes. And we celebrated Jesus' birth by obediently going where He had called us. Our year in France brought so many new friends and experiences, not to mention a new language. The most difficult part was that we didn't count on France becoming so much a part of us. It was difficult to leave just 357 days after our arrival in France. We said goodbye to our friends, started taking malaria medicine, packed our bags, and boarded a plane to another world. Our kids are great travelers. After three long flights to Tunisia, Cote d'Ivoire, and Mali, Tom and Laura Requat picked us up at the Bamako International Airport. We spent several days with them at a guest house in the capital, while they showed us the ins and outs of Bamako that we would need to know for future trips to the capital. Some good places to relax, and the markets where we can find things we won't be able to get in Kajiolo. We also went to church, right down the street from Heidi's childhood home and we stopped by her old house after church. No one lives there now, but the guard let us in and it brought back a lot of good memories. On December 21st, we loaded the trucks, said a quick prayer, and headed for Cagiolo. We left the big city of Bamako and crossed the open country. We made a potty stop slash lunch break about halfway there. Not long after that, the paved road ran out, and so did someone's luck. We got the other car fixed up with some jumper cables and some gaffers tape from my camera bag. 120 kilometers later, we were in Cagiolo. This is our town. And this is our house. 
our little corner of the world. Brenda Allen, a missionary to Guinea, helped us drive down, and she stayed with us through Christmas. She had counseled Heidi when Heidi was in high school. She did Drew's well baby checkups after he was born in Cote d'Ivoire, and she's been a huge support to us ever since we first left for the mission field. The Rekwats had already set up a Christmas tree for us, so it was ready for the kids to decorate when we got there. December 21st was a big day. December 22nd was less eventful. It has been a slow, tired process of settling in. Right away, the kids started learning about a new way of life. Chicken doesn't come in a pack of four thighs. We took advantage of having a car here while Brenda was still with us, and we drove down to the border town where we could open a bank account. Heidi and I had done almost nothing to get ready for Christmas. Every year, Heidi gets an ornament for each of our kids, but this year it just didn't happen. Praise God, my mom sent out an adorable little ornament for each kid, and honestly. Our first Christmas here in Cagliolo was one of my favorites, because I loved watching my kids wrap up their own stuff to give as presents, and the gifts that our friends gave us were just perfect. The believers here in Cagliolo don't do the presents under the tree kind of Christmas morning. They get together, praise God, and sing and dance. <laughs> We have a long way to go before we're a natural part of this church. Nonetheless, there's a deep comfort in knowing that we're here with our brothers and sisters in Christ.